another chapter of Demon Rising with a Smash. Last time, Samus and Akari continued to look over Mainframe, and Akari had to stay behind because Mainframe was being sealed by a firewall to prevent infection from the super virus Damon. Meanwhile, Mr. Game and Watch has abandoned his post above the supercomputer and he decided to become a stowaway to one of the Guardian ships. So he's going to follow the Guardians and stop Demon's plot there. And Samus has just reunited with Mario, Luigi, and Peach at the Mushroom Kingdom, of course, with the song I just played. And she just found out that Mr. Game & Watch was sent by Master Hand as a spy on Damon. And it turns out that Master Hand is actually a guardian of the Smash system, because much like Bob, he actually merged himself with a key tool, because, come on, he's just one hand, right? So he had to do something in order to pass with flying colors as the new guardian of the Smash system. So, with all that out of the way, let's get on with the show. And I should warn you, this is a very long chapter, so strap in and be patient. This is when the Smashers get chosen for the Net War. Now it's going to be one of the most, most of the characters, including the hidden ones, but some of them will be omitted, for obvious reasons. Oh, and a word to the wise, when I was thinking of Mart's scenario, I was a bit rusty on Fire Emblem because I'm not really into this series. This part kept reminding me about my failure in the event match on guard, and how Link was chosen for Soul Calibur instead of Marth. I was so jealous, and he may be a little out of character, so you've been warned. On with the story. Chapter 5, The Recruitment Begins. Back at the Mushroom Kingdom, Master Hand was discussing about the seeds that Damon was using. Samus was first to speak. How do you know all this? About the seeds in your plan to send Game & Watch to the supercomputer. You must have had a good reason since you're putting his life at risk. Or rather in danger. Samus was infuriated when she talked about the little two-dimensional sprite. I've sent Game & Watch to the supercomputer to spy on Damon, as I mentioned. Since he was a small frame-like figure, he could easily not be detected. He was one of our imperfect smashers, but I saved him from deletion. Oh, okay, okay, we got it. Now my second question. How did you know about the seeds? Have you seen them before? Whatever he was going to say wasn't going to be easy for them to hear. Everyone, I have a secret to tell you. You may share it with your fellow comrades, but no one else. Understood? My fellow Smashers, you know I was chosen to govern this world, correct? There was a reason for that. In the past, I was interested in becoming a full-fledged guardian. Since I'm only a single hand, I wasn't capable of doing very much. Plus, I was constantly harassed because of my unique stature. I've always wanted to do more. I wanted more power, more attributes. So eventually I enlisted myself personally to the supercomputer where the academy was taking place. I passed all the tests with flying colors, and the Prime Guardian was impressed of my work. In fact, I was so good that I actually graduated earlier than the other cadets. He wanted to give me a key tool, but since I was just a hand and not a regular sprite, I declined. In order to give me the same abilities in which a guardian uses, I stole one of them and downloaded it, which I ended up being merged. That's the same thing that Bob did! Demon could be after you! That's true, but she doesn't know that. Guys, I'm the guardian of the Smash system. I can form portals, mend tears, even download stats of everything I see. I'm a living breathing guardian key tool. When they started to subside, Mario told them, Please, we need to gather the other fighters before we get to trapped. We'll be protected by Damon, 
but I want to fight till this war. Those who stay will continue the tournament. Peach and Luigi became scared. Those two will never stay and be plummeted by the other fighters, especially the evil ones. That made Peach say to him, What are you going to do with Bowser and Ganondorf and the others? Don't forget. <clears throat> Don't forget, sweetheart. I'm a guardian. I'll hold them back until the battle is over. Oh, let's get them before this world gets sealed. Who's with me? Everyone raised their hands. All right, let's -a go. As he did, everyone did their battle poses. Before Master Hand disappeared, he wished them all good luck. I'm counting on all of you. Okay, we'll cover more ground if we split up. I'll use my ship and head to the space sector. Mario, you go to Hyrule, then the F-Zero sector. Luigi, since you're less bolder than your brother, Peach will go with you. Gather the warriors in the sectors that are close to you. I'll get the rest of them since they are like miles away. We must hurry before the system is closed. We'll meet back here as soon as we get everyone. Alright, let's do this! They all lay their hands on top of each other as they yelled, Go Smashers! They were off. Samus cruised in her ship, Mario took a warp pipe, Luigi and Peach used another one. They all went their separate ways to get whoever was willing to save the net. Samus was the first who gathered the most smashers. She first stopped by at Corneria, where Fox McCloud and Falco Lombardi were fighting on top of the Great Fox. She could see that some Arwings and Wolfins were shooting them. As the two combatants saw the Yellow Mother ship, they immediately stopped. Hold your fire! At ease! Stop shooting! It's Samus! Sure enough, they did. She stood on the roof and shouted to them since the other ship's engines were roaring, Hey! Fox! Falco! I need your help! You have to use your R-Wings and come with me right now! Where are you going? I'm going to pick up more fighters! There is a war going on and I need reinforcements! What kind of war? A friend of mine needs us. A super virus named Demon is threatening and, and infecting the net with the word. She needs us to delete her. Most of the Guardian Collective has been manipulated already. Mainframe is her next target, and so is this world. A super virus. And she's infecting the net? I guess we'll help you. Just for, just for curiosity. Who needs our help? Master Hand and Akari. That got their attention. Clearly, they were needed. All right, we'll get in our R wings right now. Okay, but he needs only you two, no one else. I wondered why they can't use the rest of the Star Fox team. She answered that they are her only hope in defending the system and not create more victims. They agreed and hopped to the lower deck and went to the back hatch. Ran down the hallway like they did in, in their other adventures, particularly 64. Met up with Peppy, Slippy, and Rob. <clears throat> We're heading to Mainframe after we stop by the Mushroom Kingdom. You guys stay and protect Corneria from enemy invasion. Understood? You got it, Fox. Be careful out there. Affirmative. We'll be fine. Good luck, Star Fox. Yelled cheered as the two pilots ran to their R wings. They took off and headed to the rendezvous point. Then Samus headed to Onnit, where Mewtwo and Ness were fighting in the city. They were in front of a tall building in. Eh, it's basically the Onnit stage. Plus, there were a lot of traffic, which nearly ran over the competitors. What the psychic Pokemon was trying to do was use Ness's, si Ness's Psy Magnet properly so he could convert enemy fire into restorative energy. I'm not really into Earthbound that much. Too difficult for me. He kept using Shadow Balls to make it work until Samus barged in. As the ship landed, the sign in the two roofs fell to the street. Ness perked up. Hey! It's the bounty hunter Samus! Aaron! What's up? She landed near them and asked for their help. Listen closely. A war is starting. The person who is responsible is a super virus named Damon. She's infected everyone in the Guardian Collective, except Matrix and my best friend, Bob. 
Mainframe will eventually be our next target, which is now sealed by a firewall. Soon this world will be too. We need to gather warriors from various locations and who is willing to fight Damon and save this system from infection. Are you with me? You two had a flashbacks of Mainframe and Matrix. And basically you would see him in a lost cause, my one shot. He worked for the Pokemon trainer Akari, and he failed to defend Enzo in a game. It's the Gods, Mortals, and Demons game, by the way, in Game Over. He failed to do so. Now that he's alive, he'll try his best to save him again. So Damon is going to infect Mainframe in this world? Who saw the info? Did Akari send you here? Yes. She needs us to protect the net from Damon's ongoing infection, or the word. God, I hate that name. She only wants me, right? I mean, since she's going through growing pains, it may be hard for her to use all the Pokemon she wants trained. So I'll go, to protect the Pokemon, mainframe, and the entire net. I'll help too! I can use my psychedelic powers to slow Damon down! I hope my training has paid off. You ready? Ness! Uh, yeah, I'm ready. This isn't a game- This isn't a game anymore. You'll have to use your powers on your own. There's no turning back. Got it? Yes, sir! Samus led the two warriors inside the cockpit and she took off to Dreamland. She landed the- She warped Kirby, who was stuffing himself with fallen apples from the wispy woods tree. She caught him just in time as the tree started to blow Kirby away like a balloon caught in an updraft. It's alright, Kirby. You're with us now. Maria went to the Kingdom of Hyrule, where a destroyed castle loomed in distance. To him and his fighters, it was instead known as the Hyrule Temple. This was one of my favorite places in Melee, by the way. It was a long way to go, and there was this maze, there were Redeads, Octoroks, Link Copies. The door was always randomized, so well, in my case, they can't remember exactly where it is, because it's like the same way. So... Once they reached the door of the Triforce on it, they went outside and saw Link and Zelda fight Ganondorf, like, in the event match. Ugh. Uh, Triforce bearers, I think. They agreed to go, and Link told him that his younger counterpart is somewhere in Termina. He found an old warpipe and saw the child there standing lonely on a pier looking over the bay. Only the warp pipe was actually a part of the Turtle Island's mouth. As it belched, Mario, Link, and Zelda flew out and landed on the red balloon where Tangle was hanging. As Link landed after the plumber and the princess's sword poked it and they plummeted to the cold dark concrete. Ah. The trio came too. Young Link was astonished of seeing his adult self. Hey! What are you doing here? Or should I say... What are we doing here? It's my younger self. And that's Tangle. Sorry about that. <sighs> Tangle just smiled and wandered away. Kid was still not getting over his nostalgia. I can't believe it. How did you get to Termina? And is that Princess Zelda? Yes. I've never seen you around here. It's a long story, but we got to get moving. There is a great evil that's coming. He told him about Damon and why they were recruited by Samus and the Master Hand. Apparently, young Link had never heard of them before, so the trio made a long explanation as they walked on. Luigi and Peach were walking into a jungle, and as they got to a clearing, they saw an enormous happy tree. It was literally so, since it's known as, well, a happy tree. From Yoshi's story, obviously. And there were fruits growing out of it. He came across a dinosaur who was swallowing a melon, a honeydew melon. The strangest thing was, as soon as it was gone, another one grew in its place. And his tongue's like chameleons. It's Yoshi, come on. Before the green plumber and the princess could stop him, Yoshi! Confused dinosaur perked up and looked at the new strangers. Who are they? As if reading his mind, it's me! <clears throat> It's me, your good friend Luigi. This is Princess Peach. You helped us save her from Bowser, remember? 
green dino scratched his chin in confusion. Clearly, he had no idea who the two fighters were. Maybe he doesn't remember us. Or maybe it's a different Yoshi. Either way, you're coming with us. In response, he shrugged his arms and followed them since he had nothing else to do. Then saw Koopa Troopa with a blue shell. He swallowed it and got Pegasus wings. They ran on his back, they rode on his back. Luigi and Peach, it was first uncomfortable since there were two riders on his small back, but eventually they made room. Soon they were on their way to the other sectors as Yoshi flew through the clear blue sky. How did we get here? Zelda asked as she and her friends wandered on a long racetrack overlooking a massive ocean, and the header said Big Blue. I guess that the Power Star wasn't a Power Star after all. It seemed to have us whooped here. But where is here? What do we do? We can't get run over by them. Well, the machines were closing fast. If you would hear like the alerts, then the cars would come and instantly they would crash into your character and send him flying off the stage. Frantically, Mario searched for a platform. He found one soaring a few feet over the track. He immediately jumped on it and the F-Zero machine sped right underneath them. The platform shook as they raced past it. That was close! We need to find the Captain Falcon. He's one of our comrades and he drives the Blue Falcon. How do we know if it's his? We just need to find the blue machine with the long, narrow nose, and it has the number 07. I think I saw him lead the other racers. He's famous for his winnings, after all. So they waited about ten nanos until they saw only one machine head toward them. Ugh. Dang error. Ugh. I hate these 